We need to find a way to conform the roof texture to that round surface, that roof itself. Krita provides three tools for that. The warp, the cage, and the liquify transform modes. Let us look at the warp and cage transforms, which we'll then use to transform our roof texture. The warp mode allows you to deform your selection using nodes. When you first toggle it on, a 4x4 grid of nodes should appear before you. Drag any of these around to warp your texture. If you click and drag outside of the transform bounding box, you can rotate your selection. Rotation comes in handy when you select multiple nodes at once, as you can then rotate them around their center of mass. But first, you have to select multiple nodes. To do that, keep the control key down and click on them. When you select multiple nodes, they will turn red. You can then move and rotate them all at once. Be sure to click outside of the nodes, because otherwise you will modify your selection. By default, the warp tool gives you a grid to work with. You can change the grid's density and the tool options darker with the subdivision value. Now, there is more to it than that. You can actually place nodes manually. To do so, click on the radio button next to the draw label. Then, click anywhere to add a node on your shape and click and drag on a node to move it. You can then press Ctrl-Z to cancel any operation, be it adding or moving a node. There is no other way to erase them one by one. But when you are done adding the nodes, press the lock points button in the tool options docker to be able to deform your image. There are two more parameters for us to look at. First of all, there is the anchor strength. It controls the algorithm used to deform the shape. The affin algorithm works well when you need to preserve the silhouette of your selection, especially with a square texture. For more rounded shapes, the strong algorithm seems to perform well, but you'll have to try them out for yourself and see which one works best depending on the situation, because in the documentation I couldn't find much information about the algorithm themselves. The flexibility slider, on the other hand, controls how strongly the nodes influence neighboring pixels. A value of 1 and between 1 and 2 works well in most cases. It's time for us to apply our roof texture to this face of the roof. I'm going to pick it, and the first thing I want to do is to make a copy of my original texture. You can see it has Shaw borders to it. Well, this is due to the fact that it's a tiling texture. Because it's a tiling texture, we can duplicate it around and make it as big or as small as we want. We can keep just one tile, but we can also replicate the texture 10 or 20 times if we want to, to have a much higher detail frequency. I'll hide the house, and we're going to go to the Layer menu, and click on the Clones Array. This tool is here to clone your texture multiple times in a grid, but it will also create clones of your texture, so if you modify the original texture, the clones will update as well. Here, we'll only use it to create a roof. A 2x2 two two grid is what I want, that's what those columns and row parameters mean. And then Krita will automatically fill the offset and distance values, so that we get a copy of the same size every time. There we go, we have all three copies. And then we can press Ctrl E after we have selected all textures to merge them together and to get a bitmap. I'm moving it down into the house group in the roof folder. And then my roof's transform will be done in two steps. First, I'll deactivate the alpha channel so that it inherits the actual roof plane. I have a base roof, and I've duplicated that portion of the roof so that I can apply the texture only to it using clipping masks. So the first thing I'll do 
is our kind of place my texture using the free transform and the rotation in space. This will make much easier to warp our texture afterwards. That way we can set the scale of our details freely. You want to conform the plane to find an angle that approximates the curvature of the roof. This seems about okay. I'll press enter to validate, move my texture around and we're done. Now it's time to fire up the warp transform tool. Straight away, I'll go to the draw mode so we can draw our own corner points. I'll place a few, so I'm going to draw a straight line going more or less through the middle of our texture. And I'm adding three points in the middle so that we can play a bit with these and find the right curvature. This will have another use as well, you will see. The nodes are in a straight line. I'm satisfied with that and I'm going to lock the points. First, I'm picking the three nodes in the middle and I'm selecting them by keeping the control key down and clicking on them successively. When I see that transform icon, I can click and drag to start to curve my texture. I'm then going to select the node in the middle and at the top to refine that curve. You can zoom in to help you a bit. And one thing I can do, because I have three nodes in there, I can pull the nodes that control parts of the roof that are away from the camera up so that it compresses the texture a bit. And this node I can pull down. Can expand the bottom part of the texture where the roof tiles are closer to us than the ones at the top of the roof. It feels satisfying. I'll press enter to validate my change. And then you can look at the result. If you're not satisfied with it, you can click and tweak the nodes. If you only have one node selected, you can always rotate the roof by clicking and dragging away from the node. And one thing I didn't mention is that when you have multiple nodes selected, if you press the control key and you click and drag away from the nodes, instead of rotating them, you're going to scale them down. This is something I didn't find too much used to, it's nice because you can compress and expand parts of the texture, as you can see. And it certainly has some uses, but I haven't found too many ways to use it just yet. I'm satisfied with the result. And now the last step is to right click on my roof texture, add a transparency mask, and to pick a brush that will allow me to add some transparency in there. Set my color to black and you can see that the mask is selected. I can start painting in there to remove the extra tiles. Especially in the shadow here. And maybe I can clean up at the top as well. When you add a tiling texture like that, you'll always have a bit of extra cleanup paint over to do. Unless it's just a concept art, then the quality of the painting isn't extremely important. What's important in a concept is the idea that it conveys everything the modelers or the art director or your client needs to understand. You can also note that the roof tile is transparent. That is because I like to make textures that you can apply on top of a base paint so that you still create a base and you choose your colors and tones and you can make every house or roof unique and you only add the details that are modular on top of it. Some people will create the full textures and apply the entire texture directly to the object. I feel that um, when you create sprites in particular, going with details will give you more of a painterly look in the final game, because you will have to paint over a bit and every piece will be similar, but it will be unique as well. Okay, that's it for the warp tool. Let's now move on the cage transform. There is another similar transform mode called the cage. In cage mode, you have to add control points manually around your selection to create a cage. Once you close it, you can select and move the points around just like in warp mode. 
You might be wondering how it's different from the Warp Transform and when to use it. Well, it's mainly simpler to use than Warp, and you always get to define your own control points by default. On top of that, it smoothly deforms your selection. It doesn't break straight lines too much like the Warp sometimes does. Let us see how it fares against the Warp mode to place a copy of our roof texture. I'll fire up the free transform tool, select the cage, and I'll start to draw a cage around the texture. It's very important. If you cut your sprite with that tool, well, when you start to deform it, it will get cut quite simply. I just put one node on either side of the texture. Now we can start to deform them. I'll keep the control key down, select the two nodes in there, and I'm going to start to pull the two nodes to curve the texture. The result and the curvature, the deformation, is much smoother than with the warp tool. You really have to pull the nodes to get that curvature. However, the curvature itself is smoother than with the warp tool. If you like that, this is a tool you can definitely use. You can then just pick one node and try to expand here, for instance. And you can see the difference. This is before and this is after with the curvature applied. I'm going to duplicate my transparency mask from the previous demo. I'm adding some of the tiles again from around here. And now we have our result. Let's compare. I have both roof textures. So this is with the cage and this is with the wall transform. The result is a bit different, but at the end of the day, both of the tools can do the job. The difference is with the warp tool, we were able to compress the tiles at the top of the roof, while with the cage transform, it is much harder to do. You can somewhat do it, but you saw that the deformation is very smooth, very subtle, so you really have to push and pull the nodes to get that result. So I'll leave the experimentations up to you. Feel free to use the tool that you prefer. Now you have the knowledge you need to put the cage as well as the warp modes to good use in other situations. For example, to produce variations of a given design. They are both great when you need to quickly tweak the silhouette and proportions of an asset in an organic way. We only have one transform mode left to explore, Liquify. It is a versatile tool that you'll get to use in lots of different situations. But it's a big one as well, with lots of options. So we'll get to learn it in a dedicated. So we'll get to learn it in a dedicated video, the next one.